Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In today in module number 7 on management of water quality, in lecture number 29 we will discuss about the water quality modeling. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture includes water quality, protection, water quality goals, hydrodynamics, transport processes, oxygen regime, mathematical modeling, governing equations, numerical modeling and groundwater transport modeling. Some of the keywords for today's lecture include water quality modeling, hydrodynamics, mathematical or numerical modeling, groundwater transport. So, as we were discussing earlier, say water quality is a major issue when we deal with the water resource in a watershed. So, it is not only the quantity of water which we, we have to get for the various purposes, but the quality for various purposes like drinking water, say do domestic usage or irrigation or industrial, certain specific qualities to be uh, met or certain standards to be met like uh, World Health Organization standards or Indian standards or British standards like that. So, that way uh, we have to say as we discussed in the previous uh, two, three lectures, we were discussing about the various uh, sources of pollution for surface water, ground water, <coughs> then various issues related to that we have already seen in the last few lectures. So, when we deal with uh, say a particular area like a watershed, say, uh, say as we have discussed it can be the, uh, the pollution can be surface on surface water or the ground water pollution. So, uh, we have to study in details what will be the say the present status say if say when we are lo looking at particular aspect what is the present status where which area the, uh, the area is polluted say like a ground water or surface water, what are types of pollution, where is the source of pollution and then uh, what what type of measures we can adopt to control this pollution and then uh, what kind of remediation can be done. So, though all those aspects we were discussing in the last few lectures. So, as we have seen this um, uh, when we deal with the surface water quality or ground water quality. So, we have to always see the water quality uh, say the it is within the perspective of say, say what is the spread of the, the pollution or say where it is moving further. So, like that. So, that way water quality modeling is uh, very important. So, water quality modeling means say it, it say through mathematical or various types of models, uh, we are trying to say uh, how the, the within a system like in a control volume or within a domain, how the, the pollutant is or the contaminant plume is moving or how the behavior uh, within the system. So, that is what we are trying to study uh, say when we say about water quality modeling. So, that can be either surface water quality modeling or ground water quality uh, modeling. So, uh, uh, say let us look into the various aspects of this water quality modeling. So, water quality models as we already discussed simulate the fate of pollutants and state of selected water quality variables in water bodies. So, like it can be uh, total dissolved solids or the COD, BOD. So, what type of parameters we choose accordingly the uh, we can develop the water quality model. So, this, this type of water quality models incorporates variety of physical, chemical and biological processes which control the transport and transformation of these variables. So, within the uh, say when we consider watershed say either in surface water or ground water, this uh, uh, the, the contaminants or the, the, the plume uh, that will be uh, moving from one location to another location with the movement of the water. So, how uh, say this movement is taking place or how we can control the transports and transformation. So, that is what we are trying to uh, do through water quality modeling. So, various parameters like a temperature, solar radiation, wind speeds, pH, uh, light attenuation coefficients. So, so many parameters can control uh, say the type of uh, uh, the, 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 the contaminant movement or pollutant movement within, within surface water or ground water within a uh, watershed. So, that way we have to see the, the pollutant loading within the watershed. So, which direction say how much pollutant pollution, pollution is there and which direction it is moving within the surface water or ground water. So, that way each water quality model has its own set of characteristics and requirement. So, depending upon what type of parameter we are trying to model. So, we have to uh, develop specific type of uh, water quality modeling either for surface water or ground water. So, depending upon what type of 
of uh, way we are uh, trying to um, model the uh, system. So, that way each water each water quality model has its own set of characteristics and requirements. So, some models can be applied to several types of water bodies and some models only for uh, particular water bodies. So, the model can be specific for particular cases or we can develop generalized models. So, that can be applicable to uh, most of the uh, problems. So, it can be like uh, say, uh, say nutrient models um, or the, the algae movements or the TDS uh, within the surface water or ground water. So, like that we can consider uh, say particular type of parameters and then its behavior and its transport or its uh, movement within the aquatic environment either in surface water or the uh, ground water. So, within this perspective when we say about the water quality modeling, we can uh, have different types of water quality models. So, water quality is modeled by one or more of the uh, following formulations. So, uh, it depends upon what kind of as we discussed what kind of pollutant or contaminant is there and then what is the process of movement or how the uh, behavior of that particular uh, system within the particular control volume or particular domain. So, that way we can have advective transport uh, formulations. So, where mainly the advection. So, we this we all discussed about advection. So, how the movement is taking place. So, the advective transport formulations or we can have dispersive transport formulations within the surface water or ground water. And then wherever uh, say if heat is the main source of pollution like um, say, uh, say the, the, the hot water coming from thermal power plants to um, uh, the lakes or to the ocean or to the rivers. So, we can see how the, the, the heat uh, transport is taking place. So, that way we can have uh, heat budget formulations or uh, say uh, we can also uh, study the, the issues related to uh, water quality related to dissolved oxygen content and then whether it is uh, decreasing or increasing and then uh, if you go for aeration how it is uh, re re how we can re aerate. Uh, and then how much saturation can be achieved, how saturation can be achieved like that. And then also we can have uh, different types of water quality models related to carbonaceous deoxygenation or COD or uh, sediments um, um, say movements and related modeling or um, biochemical oxygen demands modeling or pH. Uh, then alkalinity, then nutrients, then algae um, and or the microorganisms uh, within the uh, surface water or ground water. So, that way depending upon what type of parameter we are trying to model or depending upon what kind of contaminants uh, we are trying to uh, say uh, uh, study within the watershed or within the particular area. So, that way we can have specific type of uh, water quality uh, model. So, like advective transport model or with respect to the processes or like um, sediments uh, transport modeling or uh, say uh, nutrients trans uh, modeling. So, like that. So, then uh, as we discussed earlier also say the, the when we consider within the perspective of watersheds. So, watershed is an area as we discussed um, with the specific uh, uh, boundaries within a hydrologic system. So, th that way the main source of um, uh, say um, water is uh, rainfall and then uh, surface runoff and um, then infiltration of ground water and then finally, this water through river will be moving to the to the uh, uh, ocean. So, that way uh, say when we deal with the water quality modeling. So, we have to see that um, what kind of um, uh, say things coming to the to the watershed or say or what kind of things will be going out of the watershed. So, that way when we deal with uh, water quality modeling uh, within the perspective of hydraulic cycle or within the perspective of a watershed, we have to deal with uh, emissions that means, what is coming out of say like from the user's point of view. Uh, like uh, from the community what is emitted or what is coming out like a sewage or uh, from the factory what kind of effluent is coming. So, like that emissions. So, avoidance and reduction of pollution into the environment. So, that is generally what we will be discussing in this uh, related issues. So, like in sanitary engineering or environmental engineering. And then another things, uh, thing which we have to generally deal say within the watershed perspective is emissions uh, that means, it into coming uh, into the system like um, from the water body's point of view say say what kind of um, uh, say, say polluted water is coming to the system and then consequence of pollution then injection etcetera. 
So, that way now a new branch of fluid mechanics um, uh, has been evolved in the last few years. So, generally it is named as uh, environmental fluid mechanics. So, where we are trying to study or we are trying to model the, the behavior of various um, pollutants and then uh, say it is um, behavior within the system uh, like a control volume or within the domain we consider and then uh, uh, say the flow and transport in surface water um, uh, like rivers and lakes, flow and transport in soil and ground water, uh, flow and transport uh, in the atmosphere. So, like that a new uh, uh, say branch of engineering or uh, fluid mechanics has come which is called the environmental fluid mechanics where the various issues related to transport behavior. Uh, within the water, soil uh, and air, air are discussed. So, within the perspective of water quality, say we will be discussing say what will be the behavior of particular contamination within a river, uh, lake or pond like that as far as surface water is concerned uh, or within the within ocean also. And then ground water is concerned what happens within an aquifer environment, how the pollutant movies, uh, pollutant is moving. Uh, so, all those issues uh, we will be uh, discussing within the perspective of uh, uh, the hydrologic uh, cycle. Uh, then uh, say when we consider say the water quality issues related to in the perspective of water cycle. So, like um, uh, say the water is uh, say supplied from surface water source or ground water source and then uh, it will be taken for domestic purpose, industry purpose or trade purpose or various other purposes and then uh, this um, uh, intake will be restricted through various laws and then say after this industrial uh, trade or domestic processes then effluent will be there and so within the pro process engineering whatever we can do the treatment all those things and then finally uh, say the uh, sewage water or uh, storm water is coming say a uh, storm water overflow or waste water uh, and then that is again coming back to the systems uh, say like um, receiving water body like rivers lakes or ocean and uh, that also affect the the uh, ground water system so that way it is we can say that the water quality issues are also related to water cycle. So, since water is taken from surface water ground water sources and after uh, specific usages uh, it is uh, coming back to the system as either treated water or in sometimes uh, effluents or with uh, say with some contamination. So, that way uh, we can say that uh, when we deal with the water quality modeling. So, uh, say these issues are related to the uh, water cycle. So, now uh, when we deal with uh, water quality modeling uh, say uh, water we have to see the say what kind of protection measures we are looking for and then what are the aims or what are the goals which we have to set say for the uh, particular watershed or particular uh, issues are concerned. So, these are some of the important questions which we may have to answer generally. So, as far as water quality protection is concerned generally we are trying to ensure the quality of water uh, which guarantee the preservation of environment environmental goods. So, as we already discussed earlier, so the water quality say in terms of surface water or ground water say uh, within the perspective of environmental goods we can say that this is the standard which we are looking for the for the the waste the treated water coming to the to the to a lake or to the uh, uh, river. Uh, so, like that uh, we have to say the water quality protection since the the, the existing water within the river we have to protect with respect to the 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 outside water coming the waste water or the treated water coming to the uh, aquifer systems. So, that or to the river systems or the aquifer systems wherever the the interaction will be taking place. Then uh, say when we look into the uh, environmental goods, so it, it is just like the functions of the river as water resource then community of uh, aquatic uh, uh, li living, uh, then uh, fishing, then irrigation of farmland and then uh, uh, say for leisure and recreation purpose. Uh, so, we have to say as far as contamination is concerned uh, the, the various uh, standards are there and various goals we have to set. And then we have to say the substances from inland and suspended solids and sediments um, and then especially for drinking water is concerned we have to see the overall the best quality water is required for drinking water purposes. So, that way we can set the environmental goals or environmental goods. So, with respect to specific usage and with respect to the available sources we can set either for surface water or ground water. And then as we discussed uh, most of the time there will be interaction between the surface water and ground water. So, if the surface water is affected like rivers, lakes or ponds are affected then that also automatically may 
uh, affect the, the ground water system. And so, when we look into the water quality goals, so um, uh, water quality goals are given as a, as a concentration of a substance um, say like um, the TDA should be uh, less than 500 ppm or the fluoride should be say within the range of 2 ppm. Uh, so, like that various uh, quality goals we can set. So, this water quality goals shows condition of uh, say for example, if we consider river with regard to the environmental goods, then function as an instrument for uh, decisions, uh, protection and improvement of water quality. So, these are generally derived from uh, effective values and laws. So, uh, as far as the water quality goals are concerned for various countries uh, or various standards, uh, say various quality goals will be set and this depends upon the various environmental regulations, then um, the, the specific water usage and then uh, the location of the area. So, like that uh, many parameters are there to set uh, specific type of water quality goals or water protection, water quality protection uh, measures. So, that uh, all this depends upon uh, various uh, parameters. So, uh, when we look into water quality modeling, uh, say various considerations uh, which we have to uh, consider is with respect to the various substances uh, within the water. So, as we discussed uh, say uh, due to the various source of pollution, uh, so as far as water is concerned, the, so, so the, the substances within the water can be either dissolved substances or emulsified substances or particles uh, within the water. So, as far as dissolved sus substances are concerned, um, uh, say it can be either hydrodynamically neutral uh, like a simple tracer or hydrodynamically active like it can change um, its phase like um, uh, density or viscosity all those things can change. So, it can be like um, salt water within the, the fresh water or so various chemical uh, say um, uh, fluids uh, within the water. So, water substance can be either dissolved or it can be emulsified like uh, drops or bubbles say, say like lather or other kinds of contaminations. And as far as particles are concerned, it can be suspended materials like uh, sediments uh, coming from a watershed or bed material and then other kinds of sediment things within the, uh, the flowing water say like in a river or within the, the, the watershed or overland flow or the, the channel flow uh, say wherever these particles will be uh, eroded and then it, that will be sometimes will be within uh, suspended way or it can uh, get settled uh, with respect to the various environmental conditions or with respect to the velocity of the flow and other uh, conditions. So, uh, when we look into the water substances, we can uh, say divide into dissolved, emulsified or uh, particles. So, now uh, when we look into water quality modeling, uh, say uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are say uh, we are trying to depict uh, this um, the, the various parameter behavior or movement. Uh, in terms of mathematical laws. So, the generally we can uh, use the governing laws as conservation laws, most of the time we use the conservation laws like conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, then uh, the conservation of energy or heat and then the substances in, in water. Uh, so, like that the conservation laws we can consider like a conservation of mass, momentum and energy. Uh, so, when we uh, try to, when we are trying to develop the mathematical models, uh, we can uh, consider either micro scale or uh, ma macro scale. So, micro scale like um, elementary control volume we can consider uh, a control volume like dx into d, dy into dz of size like this or it can be on macro scale like uh, uh, section between uh, two, two, two section be, between in, within a river or within a pond or lake. So, it can be uh, the control volume can be elementary size or it can be uh, uh, macro scale. So, now uh, when we are trying to say most of the time uh, water quality modeling is concerned, um, we will be trying to develop mathematical models since that is the way we can uh, try to uh, quantify say the contaminations or the pollutant movement uh, within the aquatic environment 
uh, either surface water or ground water. So, mathematical models uh, say first we are trying to uh, set in terms of uh, certain governing equations and boundary conditions and initial conditions and then uh, uh, say it can be the with respect to spatial variations like one dimensions, two dimensions or three dimensions and then it can be time dependent uh, or um, time independent. Uh, so, it can be steady state or transient uh, variations. Uh, so, uh, uh, otherwise say if you want to look in a holistic way uh, as far as water quality is concerned with respect to the measurements we are say at various location that is um, a quite cumbersome and very expensive process. So, that way we are looking to the uh, mathematical modeling. So, mathematical modeling uh, as far as water quality is concerned uh, that uh, tries to give the or it gives the prediction of water pollution uh, using mathematical simulation techniques. A typical water quality model consists of a collection of formulations representing physical mechanisms uh, that uh, determine in the position and uh, momentum of pollutants uh, within the water body. So, as we discussed uh, like uh, say the governing equations are generally coming from conservation of mass, momentum and energy. Uh, so, that way uh, say this uh, uh, specific models are uh, derived, mathematical models are derived and these models are available for individual components of the hydraulic systems. Uh, such as surface runoff um, or groundwater systems or various specific uh, type of um, say reactive transport or uh, specific components of the pollutant is concerned. So, this type of models are addressing the hydraulic transports and for ocean and exurian applications. So, a transport can be as far as uh, within the, the, uh, the uh, surface water environment like uh, lake, river or um, ponds or ocean and then also it can be within the ground water systems. And so, that way also uh, possible. So, that way as far as water quality is uh, modeling is concerned we first try to uh, uh, represent the, the particular uh, say uh, pollutants, pollutants or contaminants uh, within the environment uh, in terms of uh, uh, mathematical description like governing equations uh, and the uh, boundary conditions. So, uh, for in, in, the, in this way when we are trying to uh, develop the uh, water quality models say as we discussed uh, uh, various processes like um, uh, say diffusion, dispersion, advective transport, uh, reactive transport like that what we discussed in some of the earlier lectures. So, that way we have to understand the hydrodynamics what is happening within the uh, surface water or ground water. So, that way say how the uh, the flow is taking place, uh, the depth variations with respect to space and time and then velocity variations, pressure variations etcetera. So, we have to first under understand the hydrodynamics uh, or the mechanism of flow uh, within the, uh, the domain or within the environment which you are considering. So, that way we have to do first a hydrodynamics modeling and then uh, we will be going for the, the uh, water quality modeling or transport uh, modeling. So, uh, hydrodynamics is concerned generally we can represent the governing equations in terms of conservation of mass and then conservation of momentum or a conservation of energy. So, conservation of mass generally so called continuity equation uh, we can derive uh, as shown in this equation. Uh, so, here V x, V y and V z are the velocity components in x, y z directions, rho is the density and t is the time. Uh, so, this uh, we can uh, derive say when we consider the time variation and the density variation. So, if you are considering say for example, like water we consider as incompressible fluid then uh, this equation converts to the continuity equation like this where del V x by del, y, del x plus del V y by del y plus del V z by del z is equal to uh, 0. So, that way we can uh, derive the, uh, the continuity equation based upon the conservation of mass. Then uh, say the uh, other types of equation which we have to generally solve is the, uh, the, uh, the equation based upon the conservation of momentum. So, generally these equations are called Navier-Stokes equations. So, in three dimensions we can have uh, 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 governing equations in x, y, z direction. Say for example, in x direction uh, the velocity the, the, um, with the, the velocity variations in x, y directions are represented as v x, v y and v z and then uh, g is acceleration due to gravity and uh, h is the flow depth uh, uh, and then uh, uh, nu is the kinematic viscosity 
so then uh, this equation um, uh, say um, uh, we can represent say for example in x direction and del v x by del t plus v x into del v x by del x plus v y into del v x by del y plus v z into del v x by del z is equal to minus d del h by del x uh, plus nu into del square v x by del x square plus del square v x by del y square plus del square v x by del z square. So, that way we can represent the, the uh, moment equations. So, this for x direction similarly we can write for uh, y directions and uh, uh, z directions. So, generally we can solve uh, to understand uh, the hydrodynamics within the, within the domain we can solve the continuity equations and the moment equations uh, say this three equations in for 3D problems and the continuity equations. So, from that generally we can obtain the velocity variations and the, uh, the, the, the pressure or depth variations within the uh, domain or within the, uh, the location or within the area which we are uh, considering. So, the, the Modeling can be three dimensions or two dimensions or one dimensions uh, depending upon the uh, various consideration which we are trying to uh, model the systems. Uh, so, then uh, say uh, this gives the so solutions of this continuity and uh, moment equations give the variations of the, value, uh, the velocities and the, uh, the depth or the pressure variations within the, uh, the, the, the flow domain. Then uh, say various uh, say as far as transport is concerned uh, we have to consider various processes like um, uh, diffusive process like molecular diffusion then turbulent diffusion and dispersions. And then uh, say if molecular diffusion is concerned it is the transport process that uh, originates from the molecular activities like uh, Brownian movement. And then uh, the driving force for molecular diffusion is the concentration gradient. So, wherever the gradient is there, wherever the, the concentration is higher, then it will be uh, moving towards low uh, concentration gradient. So, that is uh, so uh, based upon so called fixed law, fixed first law. So, the molecular diffusion is generally described by the molecular diffusion coefficients as shown here, and the fixed law is represented. Uh, the as q is equal to minus dm uh, del c by del x where c is the concentration uh, uh, and dm is the the uh, diffusion coefficient so that way uh, based upon this fixed law we can derive the mass transport equation uh, say for a for a control volume uh, uh, by considering the advective uh, transport also so this uh, the governing equation uh, generally say this also we can write in uh, x y z direction. Uh, so, here uh, specific uh, say uh, specific equation for mass transport um, uh, x y z direction is specifically for the uh, hydrodynamics and mass transport equation is only uh, with respect to the, uh, the uh, variation in x y z direction as uh, uh, shown uh, in this equation. So, that is v, v x into del c by del, del x plus v y into del c by del y plus v z into del c by del z. Uh, minus d m into del square c by del x square plus del square c by del y square plus del square c by del z square is equal to uh, minus del c by del t. So, this gives the uh, mass transport equation uh, say the variation we can get in x y z direction by solving this uh, one equation and then of course, say v x v y v z uh, we are obtaining from the solution of the concentration of mass uh, uh, or continuity and momentum equations as descri described in the uh, previous slides. So, then uh, if you are trying to model uh, say the heat transfer uh, problems like um, as we discussed this say related to the, uh, the heat transport processes which we have to consider then we can solve the governing equation can be obtained like this and then uh, uh, say um, this d t st stands for thermal diffusivity coefficient and t is the temperature and v x v y is the velocity variation. Uh, so, this uh, heat transfer equation we can solve. Then uh, say uh, if the uh, say depending upon the flow conditions say the flow within the uh, the aquatic environment like in a lake or river, say river uh, say or in a channel the the uh, depending upon the velocity of the flow it can be turbulence or uh, the the laminar. So this we can uh, define in terms of so called Reynolds number. We, uh, say um, uh, that Reynolds number variation we can consider, and then in terms of Reynolds number, give the ratio of inertial force to viscous force. 
So, uh, so, so we have to identify first the turbulent flow or laminar flow accordingly if that it is flow is turbulent um, uh, we have to um, uh, consider the uh, the turbulent nature of the flow. So, nature of turbulence like irregular characterized by variations uh, with respect to time. So, this is uh, happening due to intensive mixing uh, rotation dissipa dissipative movements uh, like that. So, you can see that uh, if it is laminar flow then the velocity variation will be in layers or the flow will be in terms of la layers. If it is turbulent flow you can see that the velocity variation is the, the flow is fluctuating or the velocity is varying uh, like this. So, that way when the turbulent flow uh, say as far as uh, the transport process is concerned we have to consider the variation with respect to mean variation. So, v is equal to v bar plus v dash. So, v is the velocity vector. So, v bar is the, uh, the uh, mean velocity and v dash is the fluctuating component. So, similarly the pressure variation or the, the, the various other parameters uh, we can consider as far as the turbulent uh, flow is concerned. So, then uh, say uh, in a turbulent flow also we have to uh, solve the continuity equations and momentum uh, uh, equations. So, the continuity equation with respect to mean component the same way we can write. So, this is this is this is the equation and then uh, and the momentum terms uh, the from the navier stokes equation we can um, say transform with respect to this fluctuating components uh, and the mean components and then the final equation can be written in this so these equations you can see in any of the standard fluid mechanics like um, fluid mechanics by wiley and streeter and then uh, say as i mentioned uh, say the the main important parameter which we governs whether the flow is laminar turbulent is the reynolds number which is the ratio of inertial force to viscous force say for example pipe flow uh, it, the flow will be laminar up to reynolds number of 2000 and 2000 to 4000 we consider as uh, the the uh, say trans, the variation is uh, transformation is taking place to laminar to uh, uh, turbulent so above 4000 um, it will be uh, completely uh, turbulent so but uh, up to 2000 generally we model as laminar variation uh, laminar flow conditions and above uh, say 2000 um, uh, say or say definitely above 4000 it is turbulent but above 2000 say the transformation is from laminar to turbulence as far as open channel flow is concerned say up to 5, 500 we consider as laminar and above that we consider as uh, uh, turbulent flow um, conditions and then the we have to um, uh, use the specific type of equations for laminar flow conditions or turbulent flow conditions so, the turbine flow uh, condition say, say the momentum equation which is derived from the uh, say, say uh, Saint Mina, the Navier Stokes equation uh, which is generally called as Reynolds transport equation is uh, described in terms of the fluctuating component of uh, velocities like um, V x dash, V y dash and V z dash and its uh, variations. And uh, here this um, uh, eta is the, the kinematic viscosity which is defined as uh, say dynamic viscosity uh, eta by uh, uh, rho. So, nu is equal to eta by rho. So, in terms of that we can represent. So, that way when we are looking for the, the, the water quality modeling. So, first um, uh, we have to solve the hydrodynamics and then obtain various uh, parameters like um, flow variations, pressure variations or the uh, velocity variations either in laminar flow conditions or turbine flow conditions. Then we have to solve the transport equation uh, like advective transport equation which we have mentioned. Uh, so, the solution of this transport equation is only possible once we know the hydrodynamics or the flow variations. And then when we solve this um, uh, say uh, uh, hydrodynamics equations or flow equations and transport equations together, we can uh, get the uh, flow variations as well as the transport uh, variation within the, the domain which we consider. So, as far as water quality modeling is concerned as we discussed the various important parameters which we have to consider uh, are the molecular diffusion, turbulent diffusion, dispersion, momentum flux, turbulent moment exchange, heat flux etcetera. So, these uh, various terms are quantified as um, shown here. So, like diffusion what is happening or dispersion uh, within the river or turbulence and uh, all this we have to consider 
uh, when we look into water quality uh, modeling. So, anyway going to the all the details of this is no, not the purpose of uh, this lecture since uh, you now we are discussing the water quality issues relevant to watershed modeling watershed um, base only. So, that way we are not going to all these details of this kinds of uh, water quality modeling. So, now uh, say as far as water quality modeling say for example, transport in rivers and canals are concerned say for example, one dimensional transport. So, if you consider the convective transport or dispo dispersive transport. So, the uh, the governing equations which we have to solve is uh, shown here where here uh, u is the velocity, c is the concentration and a is the area of flow. Uh, then um, say k is the dispersion coefficient. So, like that uh, we can consider a control volume like this and then uh, we can uh, do the water quality modeling. So, like uh, size of section microscopic or macroscopic. So, these uh, details are taken from the lecture notes of Professor Kobus, uh, Department of Civil Engineering Uni University of Stuttgart, Germany, uh, say on the course notes on environmental fluid mechanics. So, like a distribution process uh, diffusion, then uh, we have to consider uh, say like this, uh, which is coming from the fixed law and then uh, say macroscopic dispersion all those things we have to see the advective transport uh, behavior also uh, within the uh, system we consider. So, the modeling is concerned say for example, uh, say the con contaminant transport within uh, in a uh, river or a channel uh, say as I mentioned the modeling can be in one dimensions. Uh, one dimensional modeling or two dimensional modeling or three dimensional modeling. So, accordingly the governing equations uh, here uh, is given. So, this is say for example, one dimensional modeling del c by del t plus v x and del c by del x is equal to k into del square c by del x square where k is the dispersion coefficient uh, where i is the sink or source term. Uh, so, like that we can represent. Similarly, if we are considering two dimensional transport um, uh, water quality modeling. So, we have to solve the equation uh, in x and y. Uh, so, this equation will be the governing equation uh, and then three dimensional transport equation will be with respect to v x, b y, v z uh, and uh, these terms uh, we have to solve this system uh, say coupled with the flow equations of continuity equation and the uh, moment the equations. So, that where depending upon what kind of um, uh, say water quality modeling you are intended to do uh, say like in the, the transport uh, phenomena or the, the contaminant transport in a river uh, in a lake or whatever system which you are considering. So, we can go for one dimensional modeling say for example, river quality modeling generally we can do one dimensional modeling uh, or two dimensional modeling or uh, three dimensional uh, modeling. So, now another important uh, aspect which we generally will be looking into is the oxygen regime of rivers uh, when we are looking for the uh, river quality modeling. Uh, so, uh, this we can represent in terms of dissolved oxygen. So, the combination of oxygen deficit and re uh, we can combine in terms of an equation called a streeter flow equation. So, here the assumptions used in the derivation of this equation include uh, oxygen transfer only over water air interface, upstream effects are not taken into account. So, governing equation is del C s minus C bar by del T is equal to uh, k d into L minus k a into C s minus C bar, uh, where this parameters like L is the biological oxygen demand, L 0 is the biological oxygen demand at time t is equal to 0, uh, uh, then uh, k a is the coefficient of uh, re aeration. Uh, then k l is equal to r by y k d is the decay, uh, decay coefficient c s is the oxygen saturation concentration. Uh, so, like that and with respect to certain boundary conditions with respect to this concentration of dissolved oxygen and the uh, the bio BOD uh, uh, particular conditions uh, we can uh, identify the the oxygen regime within the uh, river. So, you can see that if um, say oxygen uh, say with respect to time in days if you consider particular location. So, oxygen saturation is this and then um, say if uh, depending upon the contaminant pollutant load within the river the oxygen profile uh, if there is no aeration is taking place then it will be keep on decreasing like this. And then if there is aeration we are giving or aeration is taking place then oxygen profile with the aeration is shown this. Uh, as shown in this figure as reproduced from the lecture notes of Professor Kobus. So, uh, say as far as Streeter-Fels equation is concerned we can uh, even have an analytical solution uh, 
uh, as given here. So, when we are looking for the the, the modeling of oxygen um, uh, regime within a river, uh, we can use uh, even this street reference equations and then correspondingly we can um, uh, identify how the oxygen um, content changes uh, within the partic with a particular section or within the uh, say longitudinal section of the uh, river. Then another aspect is as we discussed is the water the, the water quality is concerned it can be the surface water or ground water. So, this ground water transport is also we have to uh, model with respect to the flow and transport phenomena. So, the say for example, when we consider two dimensional uh, flow and transport modeling the Gavani equations say in a confined aquifer uh, we can write like this del y del x of T x in del h by del x plus del y del y of T h in del h by del y is equal to s in del h by del t plus w in delta in x minus x i y minus y a minus q s. So, similarly the same thing this T x T y are the, the transmissivity of the aquifer system k x k y are the hydraulic conductivities. So, similar way uh, the equation we can write for unconfined aquifer and q w is the, the, the pumping uh, uh, say at particular location and the q s is the source of sink terms within the aquifer systems. And based upon this uh, flow uh, equations, we can solve these equations based upon the appropriate boundary conditions and initial conditions and then uh, uh, we will be getting the head distribution within the aquifer systems and then using the Darcy's uh, 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 law, uh, we, we can get the velocity variation V x and V y as shown here. Then we can uh, put this uh, V x V y in the transport equation which is given here where r is the retardation coefficient generally we can consider as that is equal to 1 if there is no uh, retardation effect to be um, considered. Then uh, d x d x and d y are the uh, dispersion coefficients uh, V x V y are the velocity obtained from here uh, and then uh, c is the concentration uh, and uh, lambda is the, the the radioactive decay coefficients. So, like that depending upon what type of parameters we will be modeling as far as ground water is concerned and uh, we can use the ground water transport modeling. So, as far as water quality modeling is concerned uh, we can uh, uh, say look into surface water quality modeling or ground water quality modeling and then for specific uh, say processes we can have specific type of mathematical equations or uh, models or uh, specific uh, component like a TDS or uh, BOD, COD or nutrients uh, or algae or microorganisms, uh, we can have specific set of equations. So, we will be solving this type sets of equations and then uh, we will be trying to uh, get a solution as far as the uh, flow and transport process is concerned. Uh, then uh, say uh, uh, while solving this type of uh, equations as you can see these are all partial differential equations uh, we cannot uh, only few uh, specified cases uh, simple cases only we can have the analytical solutions. Uh, so, uh, for most of the field problems we cannot have the analytical solutions. So, that way as we discussed earlier also we have to go for numerical modeling. Uh, so, numerical procedures uh, gives the approximate solution to uh, most of the field problems. So, this numerical models transform a complex uh, practical problem into a simple discrete form of mathematical description and uh, uh, this numerical models uh, recreate and solve the problem on a computer and finally reveal the phenomena virtually according to requirements uh, of the user. So, numerical approximate solutions for a complex problem efficiently as long as proper numerical method is used. So, uh, there are number of numerical methods are available uh, with respect we say for the last few decades uh, with the, the advancement in computer technology number of numerical models like finite difference method, finite element method, finite volume method, uh, method of characteristics, boundary element method, mesh free methods like that uh, number of uh, techniques have been developed. And then uh, depending upon what type of process uh, we are trying to model or what kind of uh, say uh, uh, contaminant we are trying to uh, model within the aquatic environmental either surface water or ground water, we can choose specified models, uh, specified technology and uh, then of course, nowadays uh, so large number of models are available in the market. So, depending based upon uh, various numerical techniques like finite element method or finite difference method which are the most commonly used. Uh, numerical tools. So, we can choose uh, depending upon the user's familiarity and needs, 
we can choose particular uh, uh, say uh, models for surface water um, analysis quality analysis or ground water quality analysis. So, uh, say as far as surface water quality models are concerned few of the most commonly used models I have listed here. First one is the WASP water quality analysis simulation um, program, it is by United States Environmental Protection Agency and uh, this WASP interpret and predict water quality responses to natural phenomena and man made pollution for various um, uh, pollution management decisions. Then another model is called um, uh, QAL 2, 2K um, quality 2K. Uh, so, this mo models um, we can use for river and stream water quality models uh, either in 1D or 2D. And then uh, another model is called uh, Aquatox. So, this model is used for simulation of aquatic systems. Uh, it predicts the fate of various pollutants such as nutrients and organic chemicals or uh, effects on uh, uh, ecosystems. And then another model EPD uh, RIV1. So, riverine hydrodynamic and water quality model, a system of programs to perform 1D hydrodynamic uh, uh, hydraulic water quality simulations. And then uh, the famous uh, SWM model, storm water management model, where the hydrodynamics and the transport um, uh, within the uh, open channels uh, we can uh, simulate, so, so called uh, SWM models. So, like that large number of uh, surface water quality models are available. Uh, in literature and in the market. So, depending upon what type of problem we are going to solve uh, and then what kind of contamination you have to address, uh, we can choose a specific type of uh, models. Then as far as groundwater quality models are concerned for flow modeling, we can use this the standard model based upon final difference called a mod flow. Uh, then uh, uh, which is given by United States Geological Survey USGS then mod path flow line model for depicting streamlines, then MOC USGS 2D advection uh, uh, dispersion code, then MT 3D three dimensional transport code uh, with which is uh, which works uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, coupled with the mod flow, then RT 3D three D transport uh, uh, say reactive transport models and this also works with the mod flow, then bio plume uh, 2 and 3 related to uh, the, uh, the bio remediation modeling. Then uh, finite element based models like uh, FEM water, then uh, number of other packages like uh, groundwater modeling systems you can see. So, here also as far as groundwater quality modeling is concerned depending upon uh, the, the, the type of model which you, need, you are looking for one dimension, two dimensions or three dimensions and depending upon the contaminant which we, we have to address. Uh, so, we can choose specific type of models uh, and then uh, we can use for the groundwater quality uh, modeling. So, now before closing this lecture, uh, say we will briefly go through how uh, a specific type of groundwater quality model uh, can be used to predict the transport uh, phenomena, transport within a, uh, an aquifer system. So, the case study is um, uh, Hindal, Hindako, Belgam and uh, in Belgam area. So, this is the aquifer system, the, the domain uh, uh, area. Uh, so, uh, this um, uh, area uh, say uh, uh, one of my students Meenal has modeled uh, using the uh, mesh free model which she has developed. Uh, so, the details of uh, this study area is given in Thar et al 1999 and then uh, Meenal and Eldo submitted to General Hydraulic Engineering ASCE. So, some of the, uh, the parameters considered in this uh, study area, the watershed area, the aquifer area is about 72 square kilometer and this is basaltic terrain uh, say on northern side of Belgaum and then watershed is drained by a river called uh, Markandeya river in the north. And here the main source of pollution is red mud, hydrous silt muddy, highly alkaline solid waste produced by physical and chemical treatments of bauxite industry in this particular location. And so, main source of pollution is TDS coming from this. Uh, so, red mud is harmful to the ecological environment, safety of its storage has become an environmental problem. So, the natural recharge in this area 65 millimeter per year as estimated by National um, um, Geographical Research Institute NGRI. Uh, then uh, uh, say this seepage from um, uh, red mud pond is about um, simulated as additional recharge about 130 mm per year. So, as far as the aquifer uh, system is concerned uh, in the model for modeling purpose we have considered three zones, zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3 as shown here. This is um, uh, say this one is um, say zone 3 is this, zone 2 here. 
and then uh, so on one. Uh, so, here this is the Markandai river on the this side. Uh, so, here the longitudinal dis the, the dispersivity is considered as 50 and, uh, and uh, transverse dispersivity as 5 and specific yield of the aquifer is considered as 0 0.2. So, for zone 1 the hydraulic conductivity is 0.5 meter per day, zone 2 1 meter per day and zone 3 2 meter per day. So, as I mentioned uh, my student Meenal has developed a mesh free model, uh, the details are given in this conference paper as well as this uh, submitted journal paper. So, this is the domain which uh, we consider the mesh free model. Uh, so, this is the, uh, the contaminant existing plume, our aim was after 10 years how much the contamination will be spreading. So, here we developed a flow model and the transport model based upon the mesh free technique. Uh, so, here um, the various nodes we simply use only nodes. Uh, so, the details of this mesh free uh, technique you can uh, look into this paper uh, in the general engineering analysis with the boundary elements published in 2012 to dimensional contaminant transport modeling uh, 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 say using mesh free point collocation uh, method. So, here this way this is the aquifer domain and these are some of the nodes used for the modeling and this is the existing plume. So, using say flow and transport in 2 D we considered a 2 D model. Uh, so, this is uh, say uh, the head steady state head distribution within the aquifer system uh, varying from say 755 meter to 720 meter. Uh, so, here and this is the river flow and this is the head variation and based upon this the velocity distribution has been determined by running the model the coupled flow and transport model. Then uh, uh, the head distribution after 20 years, so this model has been run for 20 years and then uh, you can see the, the various the, the, the uh, head variation within the aquifer system uh, after the, the uh, simulation for 20 years. So, this is 755, 750, 745, 740, 735, 730, 725, 720 uh, like that we identified with respect to the some of the abstraction taking place uh, within the, the domain. Uh, with respect to certain pumping wells existing in the, the uh, aquifer system. And then after 20 years of the simulation how the, the contamination is spreading. So, you can see that uh, this is the existing contamination uh, say uh, with respect to the, the, the 1999 data. Uh, so, then after 20 years say how the contamination is spreading you can see that uh, here uh, a small movement the hydraulic conductivity is very low in this area. So, the, the contamination spreading is uh, uh, very small uh, as you can see here. So, the main uh, purpose of the presenting this case study is to show how this type of models we can develop as far as the flow and transport uh, either in uh, uh, the, the ground water systems or the surface water systems also we can uh, develop such uh, models. Uh, so, generally we have to solve the flow and transport um, uh, models uh, uh, together. So, flow models give the variation of velocities and uh, uh, depth variation or the hydraulic uh, the, um, the depth uh, the, the hydraulic potential within the aquifer systems as far as groundwater is concerned. And then based upon that say we can identify how the velocity variation is taking place. And then we solve the, the transport equation uh, either in 2 D or 3 D or whichever way we are modeling and that gives the, the variation of the particular constituent like a TDS or that concentration, how it is moving say uh, spatially as well as well as temporarily. So, that is the way we do the water quality uh, modeling uh, either for surface water or ground water. So, some of the important references used for today's lecture uh, say especially in the website www.epa.gov where uh, environment protection agencies website and some of the other uh, uh, literature used for today's lecture. So, before closing some of the questions like tutorial questions, uh, critically study various ground water uh, uh, and um, surface water quality models available uh, in literature. So, we can see the various um, models available like uh, uh, in EPA website or Bentley web websites. Study the capabilities of each model and the, the problems where it can be applied. So, some of the models we have already discussed and then other models details we can you can get from the uh, internet sources. Then some uh, self evaluation questions, evaluate the different types of water quality modeling 
uh, describe water quality modeling within the perspective of water cycle, uh, explain uh, various conservation laws used in water quality modeling, uh, describe with uh, uh, governing equations in the groundwater transport modeling, illustrate the role of numerical modeling in water quality modeling, uh, describe various models used in water quality modeling. So, all these questions you can answer uh, based upon today's lecture. Uh, then a few assignment questions like illustrate watershed based uh, water quality issues within the perspective of water hydrologic cycle and what are the typical water quality problems goals. Then describe with the uh, governing equations the surface water transport modeling and then illustrate the oxygen regime modeling in reverse or in channels. Then describe various models used in surface water quality modeling. So, all these questions also you can answer. Uh, based upon uh, today's lecture. Then uh, say uh, as an unsolved problem say uh, with reference to a typical point source pollution from an industry to ground water in your watershed area, uh, critically study the possible water quality modeling for TDS concentration, identify the possible water quality model from the open sources like mod floor empty 3D, then collect the necessary data for the water quality modeling and try to develop the model for your study area and predict the uh, future spreading uh, say for next 10 years or 20 years how the, uh, the transport is taking place and I mean transport is uh, or plume movement is taking place within the groundwater systems. So, what we discussed today is say mainly on water quality modeling. So, we discussed about the, the surface water quality as well as ground water quality. So, we discussed the mathematical uh, uh, governing equations uh, and then um, say how we can uh, um, say uh, model say uh, typical systems say either in one dimension, two dimensions or uh, three dimensions. So, uh, we will be further discussing one more lecture on the water quality modeling related to environmental guidelines as far as the uh, water quality issues are concerned in the next lecture. Thank you.